I didn't like it even playing it, honestly. Gurps? More like Purge. You didn't go for Burps? Burps. I, you, I can belch on command. Do it. Oh. Do it, 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 do it. I can hear it, dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm Jamie. I regret everything. <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome back to oh. Come Come, where we come, the community comments for comments to so come. So you don't have to. Exactly, we hey. want you to do it. All right, don't do it. And uh, we've got here today, I'm, uh, who are you? I'm Ricky. You're Ricky. I'm Ricky. Rachel. I'm, I'm, I'm Ricky. It's a good choice, good play. Jamie. No, he's, he's Ricky. I'm Jamie. Liar. Hi All right. there. And today, we're going to be commenting on some videos. Here. From Kiln Spark, That Sinking Feeling, uh, Nolan McBride said, Being from Amish country myself, I really want more lore on this Amish Dragonborn community. Are there Mennonite Dragonborn communities as well? So, I, I'm the DM, and right. I can tell you, yes, of course, <laughs> there are other uh, Dragonborn communities that don't like technology and live out in the wilderness on their own. Um, I personally don't know a lot about Amish, uh, other than all the me hating Weird Al songs about Amish people. That's something about against the Amish that's more like against uh, Weird it's probably, Al. It's probably, a, a, in, like, it's probably pro-Amish, right? They're probably on the Amish side for that one. Probably. It's an Amish paradise is the song, right? Yeah, right, Amish what? paradise is the song. Yeah. Weird Al imagines a better future for the Amish. <laughs> don't we all? Um, and that's why Ricky hates him. Essentially, <laughs> I planned to know Amish Dragonborn, and then Kyle was like, I want my character to come from like an Amish tech hating background, and I was like, "Great, of course, there's communities of Amish dragonborn everywhere." <laughs> um, this is cold world building. Yeah, this is commutative storytelling at its finest. I'm really happy with Kyle's character. I like all the characters from Kill and Spark. Right. I really yeah, like yeah, John's yeah. character too. I uh, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I have split feelings about John's character. I love how John is playing John's character. I, I, I the as, name. I I I did note the name. Um, I w was planning on a, a, a good, like, just Tom Tom call out at some point. Yes. Uh, the uh, Captain Garmin for the Goblin Guide. Because he's a navigator. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's a GPS uh, brand. It is a GPS brand. I just got brand. it. Uh, it's from C. Sucha, who says, It's a shame the series has so little views, but I love it. Oh. Hey, guess what? I also love it. Go watch it. Door Monster <laughs> Podcast. Subscribe to the second channel. Yeah. Please. It's not all just Kyle and Allison reruns. Uh, but that's also good to watch, too. But yeah, Killspark goes up pretty regularly, actually, so... It goes up at least... Once a month. Once-ish, every three weeks. I gotta work on the next episode yeah. uh, after yeah. this. I'm reading the comments for targeted ads. Um, and the first uh, comment I'd like to read is from... Nilin. Uh, and it says... I was about to hit the skip bad button, but then I was like, wait, is that Kyle's voice? Yes, yes is it was. Is that Kyle's voice? That's actually very valuable data, because that means you'll watch an ad if Kyle's in it. Thank like, you for right. your feedback. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good like, data. By the way, should we be passing the mic? I think we're like, like, like a little further from your face. Hold on, we just project pretty good, mic, actually. Yeah. Uh, they're picking okay. us up. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. I honestly didn't recognize Kyle's voice at all uh, from the beginning of the ad. Because he's doing the power thirst voice, right? Yeah, but I didn't know Kyle's voice could get that low. Oh, it's definitely digitally Or growly. It's, it's definitely, it's digitally grumbled. That's still impressive. I'm still I impressed so, with yeah. that, too. Um, either I was Allison. I don't know. My oh, man. Uh, either way, great job on the beginning uh, voice of that ad. The whole video is actually, I think it's one of our best videos. I really like it. Long it's long pretty good. It's yeah. pretty uh, good. It terrified was, me, but you know. Oh, no, it was a terrifying prospect, because we were just, uh, we just audibled into this script... I won't say last minute, um, but it was probably <laughs> last minute. And uh, we just, like, uh, all three of us, Kyle, Matlock, and I just all uh, went separately and just in one day wrote our bits independent of each other. And we're like, should we compare jokes or a uh, script or something? We all, we all said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we all said, well, I, I wrote mine. And we, we filmed it. And then and we put it together. And, I mean, we, we did a lot of concepting it's before we actually started. The thing we knew was, like, uh, we have to name him Kevin. Right, we started with That's the naming of Kevin. Had. No reason. Absolutely no reason. Kevin. 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 Yeah, you. We're talking to you. Nobody I else sees this. Because of Kevin. Cease your Here's investigations, Kevin. He will not. I know. He just will not. That's his way. Yeah. 
I do have another comment, and I'll read it in ASMR voice. No, I won't. I'm sorry. You can, John, you can cut that out if it's horrible. This comment is from The Nerdy Simulation. Spanish dub Sailor Moon is legit fire, though. No joke. So where did you hear this? Because you, you, it's actually, actually the word is fuego, but it's a oh, uh, good know. idea. Definitely. Uh, so <laughs> I've uh, been in El Paso areas quite a bit mm-hmm. for family, and you can watch like everything in Japanese there. But no, sorry, everything, everything Japanese in Spanish there. That makes sense. And so I remember watching a like. Saturday morning cartoon block with my cousin in Spanish, and I sort of didn't understand what was happening, uh, but my cousin was like, actually, the voices are better in Spanish than they are in English. Wow. And they said that, uh, then the Spanish Simpsons joke is from somebody else, another YouTuber says that Spanish Simpsons is better than regular Simpsons, so I sort of stole that toward Sailor Moon. I've always, but I've heard, like, legit, the, the, like, you know, the oh, three yeah, ways to watch the, the, the opening are, like, Japanese, sure, English, Great, and then Spanish. I hear that like Spanish dub mm-hmm. teams are like, they're into like it. eight plus. So I've heard like all of two episodes of Spanish Sailor Moon, and it was pretty good. Oh, nice. English. I never really, I've never watched Japanese Sailor Moon. I I think they do. It's like, I am watching Japanese Sailor Moon exclusively. Really? Usagi is grating, and I love it. That makes sense. She's Usagi. She's yeah, Japanese, she right? just. Sense. I mean, she's. A, eh, I can't make the noise. I can't I make the noise know she makes. But, Sailor Moon's oh name until I moved in with you guys. I thought her name was just Sailor Moon. It is, um, but sometimes she uh, moonlights as uh, daylights. She sunlights as Usagi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she sun- good morning, Usagi. Usagi. Oh, no. Well, in the English dub, right, her name is like I mean, Serena. Sh- Serena, right? I'm yeah. pretty sure. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Because Which is like a light spoiler when you think about it. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it totally is. Is it? Yes. Is it? How? Like, like the Williams sisters winning Wimbledon? That's what it spoils, right? No, it's. It, I mean. I haven't seen that season yet, dude. Oh my so gosh. On. <laughs> I should have never this gotten just... on this stupid. Yeah. Whatever. What video? These are from Gateway Editions. That was fun to film. That was immensely fun to film and very frustrating, and that's what makes it rewarding. Right. All right, from uh, uh, The Magic Rabbit. Relevant. Yeah. Uh, Rachel's acting is so unique. I'm so glad she features prominently in another video. Oh, that's so nice of you. I really love when we find a role that really lets you be, like, as Rachel as possible. Right. It's you should fun. be watching Con Artists. You should oh, yeah. also be watching Con Artists. Oh, yeah. Which it's is, Thursday at 7 stream. Yeah, we stream on Twitch, and Rachel just draws incredible, amazing things, and Ricky and I pretend that we are relevant while that happens. I'm just, since living here, it's just like, oh, I'm pretty good at, oh, Rachel's better than me at that. Oh, I'm pretty good at, but oh, Rachel's better at me than that. Like and Magic the Gathering. No, I'm not that. Like, <laughs> the voice acting streamer, the best not. voice actor. You're definitely the best artist. Uh, you're definitely like great at acting too. Like you're just everything. Oh, that's really nice of you. I think my acting is um, uh, unique. You just can't it's, stand still. That was the problem. Yeah, for well, it's yeah. also we, like we, we, it's best when we give you happy-go-lucky characters because you cannot stop smiling. Right. So you just have to be like, if, like, if we give you the right character who's just like always smiling no matter what, like perhaps even creepily so. Perfect. Perfect. I, like when I'm trying to write for your characters, I always think of the um, uh, Weed of Man Wales video. Oh, that was great! I fr- that was really in my element. Like enthusiasm, <laughs> it, it, your characters must be enthusiastic. The, you know how um, uh, there's like that thing about uh, you know paid actors um, to go to liberal events. Yeah, right. I should be one of those if the job exists. Well, but I those are angry people. And they don't hire you. They want oh, angry people. I thought it was supposed to be like um, paid Isn't actors. Like, you're a paid actor to like be in like the crowd for like being angry. Know. Every, and every stuff. time I see this conspiracy was... theory, it changes. So I don't know. Um, all I know is that uh, I'm a, definitely a good enough actor, and nobody's contacting me about it. So I know uh, your ankle you? was recovering, and I'm very sorry about everybody being on you about the mark. Huh? Oh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> no. About the mark? Um, no, during the filming. I oh, mean, right, hopefully, right. no one in the comments was like, "She's off her mark." Like, that's well, a very specific behind-the-scenes <laughs> uh, <laughs> thing we, to notice. We didn't. Although, supposedly, somebody said like, if you start looking for actors uh, like spotting their mark in in movies, you'll never unsee it. Just any time they're walking, just watch with a quick glance down and, as they stop. Everyone does it. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, Will I just curse knowledge. To look at their feet. That's it. Will Smith in season one of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, looks to the next person to speak faster than they start speaking and he mouths, and the mouths words. their words because <laughs> he was so, so up, he's nervous he's so nervous he just memorized everybody's the whole lines. script yeah. Aww. yeah right Aww. the first thing I thought it was like 
kind of rude that he would like look at them and mouth their lines like come on get on with it but that's that's a cute justification you know just like yeah, yeah you, we just gotta get this and then like yeah and uh, if there's a Robin Williams movie ever uh, anything that obscures anything any like prop in the scene has a script behind it because Robin Williams is terrible with scripts because Robin Williams is terrible with scripts and like you can <laughs> see him you'll see him every now and then like look at it like oh. in like Mrs. Doubtfire, any like cooking utensil at any point, mm-hmm. like there's scripts behind them, and he's like <laughs> looking at them when he That's looks funny. down to it's cook kind at of the hilarious. pot. Yeah. Right. Wow. Don't recommend That's that. That's its own art. If you're an actor. Yeah. Um, supposedly, this is also true for um, uh, like why one of the like uh, Marlon Brando on uh, Apocalypse Now. Huh. Like he was like uh, just like drunk and hung, hung over in his hotel room and didn't want to learn the lines. There's these giant cue cards. <laughs> and uh, he's like, it's part of the reason for like the, the super close in shot on him is that uh, like they just that's uh, they had to get it out everything else out of shot. Yeah. But from some internet guy, uh, I thought that was going to be based off the doctor's speech on the Rings of Akatan. I cut that a lot. Um, uh, apparently, it does sound somewhat similar to this doctor's speech. Um, which part? This is the, the bit where I go rambling off in my, my uh, the character sheets on the rain speech. Yeah, the, the Blade Runner one. It's a Blade Runner speech. It's stolen beat for beat from Blade Runner. It homages. It homages. Um, so, yeah, so what did Doctor stolen. Who do? Is the I, it's, did, they, did they steal from Doctor Who? Yeah. It, was, it was a Matt Smith episode. It was a pretty good episode. Matt Smith episode. I didn't see it. And it's got like two good Doctor speeches in it. Um, but this one is a, it's a great speech. It's a different... It's an angry, you don't know what I've been through speech, whereas uh, Roy Batty's is definitely a, a uh, oh, I wish you'd seen the things I've been through, but now no one will. It's actually, they're That's almost really exact opposites, but there's probably some influence there. Like, the doctor isn't busy, like, it's, there's a sentient son, he's trying to feed off memories, and the doctor's like, you want some memories? I got memories that'll make you bleed. Um, so they're both about being completely unrelatable. Oh, yeah. When does Matt Smith well, get edgy? Well, that's relatable. Matt get edgy? Matt Smith, yeah, he gets angry. He's a very good angry doctor. He's got, like, righteous flame, or righteous wrath. Yeah, Matt Smith gets mad. Um, I think way more angry and edgy than Tennant ever got, actually. Tennant, like, at worst got, like... Uh, he had, like, a, a sort of, like, paladin fury that's like, oh, that's cute. I don't know. Uh, Matt Smith is, like, he gets, uh, like, ugly mad. Mad Smith. Ugly Mad, Mad Smith. Way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Gets and like, like you don't think so because he's like the little kid doctor with kind of like a howdy doody face. Right. Got his ass. He does um, kind of like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> yeah. I, oh man, the no eyebrows thing. Not to body shame, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like his lack of eyebrows. From Bookman Etwala. Uh, I mean, Statless games are great. I'm here to role play, not do math. I don't know. I think this is um, uh, like uh, I definitely started my role playing games uh, journey by just uh, just collaborative storytelling with random people around me. Uh, math is for blockers. Math is for blockers or DMs, as it seems to happen an awful lot. Yeah. Um, but you know what is not for DMs? What? Scheduling the next meet. Apparently, it's <laughs> not for DMs to schedule the next meet. That's yeah, nice. We've got way too yeah. much on our plate, and so we shouldn't do. I uh, I'm so glad that. So we all have such functional, supportive uh, player systems. Right, um, that's just kind of an impressive not, complaint. In the words of the great Brian Wilson, wouldn't it be nice? If we were older? Anyways, then we wouldn't have to wait so long to have another session. It's true, yeah. <laughs> if we were older and everybody could mind their own stupid schedule. Anyway, I think, no, I think, uh, like, st- like, statless games are great. There's, like, this is one of the reasons I think 5e is... Um, uh, really good is it lets you just ignore stats when you want to ignore stats. I like there's a couple like loose statless games like yeah. Kids with Bikes, yeah, which is like or loose like statless, mm-hmm. where like it's just like um, every stat you just pick one of the seven dice and that's the stat. Oh, and so it's right. just like you're going to be really good at something and you're going to be really bad at something. That's the D four and that's the D twenty, and it's just like sometimes you roll, but mostly it's just like. Uh, you just do what you would do. It's a, like, Goonies-style... Right. Uh, Stranger Things-style. I've been uh, a kicker on the idea for a system, a, a, the, the most uh, lightweight system ever, called Ultralight, and the idea was to have it be like a Diamond Age hard light sort of setting, uh, but the only thing you ever need are either... I, I kicked around the idea of either, like, two coins or just two dice, and basically every stat you're either neutral on or you get advantage or you get disadvantage, and that's it. That's the only stat. I like that idea. And then you just kind of rework it in a couple different ways. That sounds fun. Let's play that. I've played a little bit of Monster of the Week, which really... I mean, the character build is a little more complex, but you only ever need 2d6. That's neat. That's pretty cool. And, like, your stat modifiers never get, like, that intense. It's, like, 
you pick right. a stat line and that's basically it for the rest of the game and nothing's more than like plus two or minus two. This is supposedly like the thing about GURPS, although we made GURPS the butt of this joke, um, mm -hmm. is that like after you get past character creation, which why, the reason I picked GURPS for this joke Don't get past is that I never got past character creation. Supposedly once you get past that point, it's just D6 is sitting pretty. All the video, the video I'm reading comments from is the there's rules for that about building an avatar character in D&D 5e. That's right. Yep. Um, so this comment comes from Firestorm. It says, actually need some advice. Backstory, I'm planning on making a character who was once a pixie but pissed off an archfey by falling in love with a human and bringing him home with her. Spicy. The archfey responded by turning her into a human and kicking her out of the Feywild, severing all her connection to it and forbidding any fey creature from even acknowledging her existence. Spicy again. Problem. What class do I play her as? I was thinking College of Glamour, but I'm worried the mechanics don't sync up with her backstory. So I think this is all depending on what what is what is her goal, right? Are you trying is she trying to get back in the Feywild? Because if so, you've also got like a I mean I, this is a 5e question. Yar har a fighter, who cares? Oh wow. Alright, okay, okay. <laughs> Yar the har answer is fighter. sword. Yeah. Like there's a bunch of phase subclasses, right? Like College of Glamour is a phase subclass. There's almost certainly a druid phase subclass, right? Right. Um uh, there's a uh, there's got I know there's an Archfey Warlock patron. Um, mm. so going warlock and like saying hey and like appealing to a different Archfey. You have a you have a you have a Fey probation officer. Be a revenge paladin. Be a uh, it's in the DMG, but there's rules for the uh, Forsaken Paladin. Oh, is this a, a non-lawful? Yeah, it's a, like, uh, it's a Paladin that... It's Oathbreaker. Oathbreaker Paladin. Oathbreaker. Um, it gets to do, like, all sorts of cool things, and that could be your character, like, cut off from their previous right. world. I actually... Or just run a wizard. Who cares? The class doesn't matter. The story matters. The class can help, though. If, you're, if you want to... Like, class... So this is a... A, a, a live long debate in like the Pathfinder community is a class just a bundle of actions and uh, like instructions, and you don't need any flavor attached to it. Yeah, sure, you can definitely run it. Like, I sure I'm a ninja, but really I would prefer to be thought of as a gentleman thief, and I don't need any of these like they're not key points. It's just my luck or whatever, right? Or so I do this already, right? But if you are looking for if you're like if you're not comfortable with role play and you, your class is always a great starting point, like uh, as as a character type, and you move in, like if you're if you're looking for it to build build off of. Class can be important. This person has written a huge backstory. They'll be great at role play. Sure. They just need a class. No, yeah, if you want, like, I think actually, College of Glamour is still fine. If that's to what you were thinking about running, like, it's just like the last like little because it's definitely not full fairy powers, right? Where, where, mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's like last lingering little bits. Plus, it gives a little bit of edge of tension. Like, it's a reminder that you always want to go back or that you used to be from there because you still got this last little vestige. Right. That's my thought. It's from Von Shot. Um. Oh, this is the... <laughs> okay. Please yeah. read it. Okay. Please, please read do I, it. Do I, do, do, the the do I do the character voice? Do I do the character voice? Okay. My character has a history with ending up on the path to the stomach of different crocodiles, alligators, or their kin. Is this that a nice form of grappling? If you are struggling as you slide down their gullet, thankfully one of them choked to death on me. <laughs> oh, rascal. Natural one, over and over until it died. Been there. Is that Beignet Blanc in the flesh? Beignet, Beignet Blanc. Beignet Blanc. <laughs> Beignet Blanc. <laughs> so we recently watched Knives Out. Which is so time, good. But it's so good. Watch so, Knives Out. And this is this is from the the, the five E video, right? Like, yes. So I, I can answer this question for Pathfinder. In Pathfinder, to uh, use the swallow hole action, you must have first grab them with your grab ability, which is usually just jaws for creatures. And as long as the creature you are grabbing with your jaws is one size smaller than you. Uh, or less, you can swallow whole, and then once you're inside the creature, you either can attack out of the creature with a sharp slashing or piercing weapon, or you can attempt to escape the grapple from there. When you're inside the creature, you have the grapple condition, but the creature that has swallowed you does not. Thank you, Grapple Research, for telling me all of this. Now, for 5e, I don't know if it matters. For 5e, no one knows how to just swallow swing your sword. Yeah? Once you've been swallowed? Yeah, why not? Are you grappled? Who cares? The rules, maybe? No. Anything no? big enough to eat people is just sort of like you just are just taking damage for being turns in there. Yeah. And then you just get your actions, whatever. You just get your actions, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to our spinoff series. 
There, ain't there aren't really that. any rules for that. Or, well, it's, uh, it's or so it's who like, cares about the rules for that? There's like maybe like Make 20 monsters that rule. are big enough to eat adventurers, and it's like it'll either say if you were swallowed, you insta die, right. or it'll say uh, take like this much acid damage every turn, and like all you do is you just attack from the inside. So that's going to be it for our community comments this week. Um, we'd still like to be putting this out at least once a month. I would really like to get back to doing this regularly. Because we are doing it pretty regularly. We are, yeah. We've got, like, I don't know if we missed the month before this, but we got one out recently. So these will keep coming, and uh, we'd love to keep hearing from you. So make sure you're commenting, and we'll answer your questions at least once a month. All right, we should all, for John, to make this annoying for him. Yeah. We should all look up in that way. <gasps> like we're listening to the voice of God, and John can insert his own voice here. Guys, I'm not God. John. Come on. J- Jamie, Jamie. What's please, that, I'll give you a dollar. I'll give you a dollar to let down here. Please. Please. <laughs> It's a miracle. Ah! You're saying for All right. only one dog. No, no guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want more, you can go over to twitch.tv slash TV right this minute, and we are streaming uh, our morning show. We have a morning show. What, what do we do this? on the morning show? Why did you want me in this video? Cause this is Because we both do the morning show. We do. Yeah. And we stream every single weekday morning on Twitch uh, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Time, uh, and we've had a, it's been fun, but not a lot of people know about it, so we're just advertising it real quick. You can go watch it right now if you're watching this during that time. If you're not, then it's not happening. But uh, if it is, go 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 come say hi because we, we miss you. Thanks. I. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>